and Jim Brandstetter. We play. We'll take a look at a big victory over Illinois. The highlights will also have a look at the Helping Hand program Michigan has instituted for young freshmen. Also later on, a look at Ohio State. But first, the nail biter at Champaign. 17-14, <laughs> Michigan wins. Why is it that when you go to Champaign, it always seems to come out this way? Well, you know, the last, uh, particularly here in the 80s, every game has been close. There's been very little scoring. And then the same team comes up here, and we put 50, 60 points on them up here. Is there any I, way? I can't give an answer to that. Um, I do think that uh, Illinois has an extremely strong defensive team, and they proved it uh, against us. They played, it, they played well, and we didn't move the ball real well, and it took a fourth-quarter surge <laughs> to win it. <laughs> a fourth-quarter surge. <laughs> Offensively, though, Michigan seemed to be still struggling a little bit. Was it because of their defense? Because their down linemen are very good. They're very strong. Uh, there's no question about it. Uh, we couldn't move early. Uh, they penetrated well. They, they, they played with a lot of emotion. They have three or four down linemen that are about as good as there is in the league. But your defense continued to play well and gutty. What you see in the first two plays, the way the game went, <laughs> there were a few first downs that were scrounged by both teams, but basically it was a defensive battle. And uh, then finally we hit a pass over the middle to Chris Calloway and uh, start to get things opened up a little bit. And it looked like they were covering you deep, so you went underneath to your backs. Right. Third and five here, he dumps the ball to Jamie coming across the middle on a delay. Uh, which was a big play and got us a first down. Um, I, I, you know, I thought we would run a little bit better than we did. We didn't run very well on them. Here's a third down 10, and a great uh, catch by uh, McMurtry, who got the big play here in the drive to put us in scoring position, and Jamie on a power-off tackle play goes in standing up for the touchdown, and we lead 7-0. And at that point, it looked like the offense was settling in. The defense was still playing well. Uh, but it didn't turn out to be uh, what I thought you'd start to dominate at that point. No, we didn't because uh, they played extremely well in the first half offensively, Jim, and, and uh, moved the ball on the sweeps. The backs ran well. Not big yardage, but just enough to possess the ball. And here the bootleg gets outside and runs for a first down on the situation where we almost had him stop. They ran the ball better than I think you thought they would. Well, I, I said at the beginning, if we stopped the run, we'd win the game, because I didn't think that they would beat us just throwing the ball. Here they completed one of the few passes that they threw downfield for considerable yardage. Most of it was uh, short stuff like this over the middle to a back coming out of the backfield, or someone in the flat, or bootlegging with a tight end coming across. But they got all the way down in there with a chance to score and did and tied it uh, so that we went in at halftime 7-7. Seven to seven. What was your feeling at halftime after watching the first half? Because it was kind of sluggish and kind of a little chess game going. Well, it, you're right. And neither team uh, really made any big splash offensively. And uh, so, and I didn't think we played very well. We made a lot of mistakes and other things. We got a delay game penalty and, you know, jumped offside here and a holding penalty mm -hmm. when we had a big play and uh, things like that. But uh, I just felt that if we went back out and played well, we, we would win. But I was very disappointed in our performance in the third period because that's normally been a time when we've... Um, seize the opportunity to, to do something with the football, and we didn't do it. Well, don't go away, because the third period is coming up, and the fourth period, when Michigan comes from behind to win it. That's next, when Michigan Replay continues. I was fourth and eight, man, I was having a heart attack. It was weird, you know, everyone was real nervous, you know, and watch the blitzes, you know, because they were blitzing us a lot today, and uh, watch the blitzes, watch the blitzes, and then uh, the pass went, and it kind of like everything was quiet. Then when he caught it, you know, I went, ah, so that was great to hear. And then, uh, and then on that run, it was just a great run by Phil. I'm never happier to see a guy score in my whole life. It's my fifth year. I wanted to do something big. I want to go out doing something very, very, making people proud of me, uh, especially the coaches. They've uh, backed me ever since I got here. So I just wanted to do something big for them. It was just an uh, option play off 37. And I was uh, just waiting there for the pitch. And I saw the corner coming up. And I just had one man to meet. And uh, he dove with my legs, and I got tripped up a little bit. And I just, I was looking at the corner all the time. So that was my determination to get to the corner. They run a lot of trick 
place and um, to try to confuse you. And uh, they did something a little bit different, and we got confused, and it was a good play. It's a great win. Uh, you know, um, we've had a little trouble coming back and in the past, you know, especially on away games. And, uh, you know, it, it's good for us. It, it's good for our um, momentum because we're, we're making a strong run towards the end of it, and hopefully we'll carry it on to the bowl game. Michigan at halftime tied Illinois 7-7, and really everything was working out in your favor because you had won the opening toss, deferred the decision, got the ball back, and were moving until you got stalled on a real short third and one. And at that point, I thought if you made it, the offense moved the ball in, you could have put it away with a big touchdown. Right, we, we were in a bad play there, Jim, and uh, that's just one of those things. But uh, that play hurt because you're right we picked up a couple first downs had a little momentum going we're getting the ball at midfield and uh and then all of a sudden we had to punt it and then they turn around get the football and start moving on you with right. the pass which they hadn't done most of the first half well that's true and uh, of course uh jim as you know they alternate quarterbacks between friend here number three and uh and more number 14. And uh, this kid is a bootleg type kid and moves around a little bit better than Moore does. And, and they bootleg there and got a big play. This is a missed defense. This man should not be running around left end for big <laughs> yardies like that. Uh, that was our longest running play. And, and it was a big play because it got him in the, in the position down here. But again, on fourth and one against Minnesota a week ago, you stopped him a couple times right. and another big play. That was, a, that was a great hit there. And there's no question they didn't make it. And uh, we got the ball back. And comes a third and ten, and uh, and we get sacked. Uh, pass protection breaks down. Um, believe me, Jim, they have excellent pass rushers, no question. But we should have done a better job in that regard. Here they roll out again, the same type of thing, uh, and uh, and hit a fellow for the first down. Uh, playing with two tight ends here, they hit the they cross the ends quickly and and hit the uh, play side tight end for a big play here. Used a lot of double tight end against you, too. Right, here it is. See the way the guy's running? You know right now, just the way he was running, he wasn't going to run for yardage. He's going to throw a pass. But uh, that's easy for us to see on the <laughs> sideline, and, and it's easy to see on the film, but, but that cornerback didn't see it, and so they ended up that way. Here's the great run. Jamie Morris on a 55-yard draw play. Um, and that was uh, after a holding call. That's right, after a holding call and took it all the way down in here. And, and then again, Jim, we muffed the, the opportunity to score a touchdown and have to settle for a field goal. And I mentioned at the time that I was glad to get the field goal because then that took me out of making a decision as to whether we'd go for two or right. not if we scored again. Strategy <laughs> was kind of important at that point. Yeah, but... Uh, and the defense really got you off the hook because right. they didn't allow him a first down. That's exactly right. They scrambled here on third down. He came up short of the first down, and we take over after a punt. And uh, Demetrius goes back and does a great job hitting uh, Greg McMurtry again. Uh, across the middle for a first down, um, runs the uh, quarterback draw for seven yards, and we're starting to mount a little offensive drive here, Jim, um, and we needed it because we had to get down in there and get something done. And here it is. That was fourth down and eight, Jim, <laughs> and if you think that isn't a big play with that uh, strong safety uh, hanging on Callaway, uh, we were able to get the playoff and do it. We got down in there close on first down, gave Jamie the ball in a draw play. Uh, about the 10 yard line, he went down inside the three. We came down to a third and one, and here's the pitch out to Webb, and, and Phil runs uh, around the defense and scores, and that's the winning touchdown. With 43 seconds left. 43 seconds left, so there isn't any question that that's cutting it very, very thin. Here we, uh, on the first play, they go back to pass, knock the ball out of the quarterback's hands for a big loss, and, and uh, we're doing a good job here yeah. defensively. And now. the point of this was is they got a good return after you got illegal procedure on the first kick that stopped them at the 20 right. they're out about the 30-yard line. That's exactly right, and that's not good. But here's their last uh, dying gasp. They throw this pass, and with four seconds left, we take over and win the game. You had to be <clears> delighted <throat> with the win. One, it came on the road. Two, again, in a hostile stadium. And really, I think, you know, Demetrius Brown, uh, we were talking a little bit about this earlier, for being under duress and having some problems this season, 
He's a tough kid. He's come He's back won. and delivered under some big pressure. <laughs> That's right. He's one tough competitor. Well, the whole team has, really. I mean, if you look at our situation, uh, I don't know many teams that could have lost as many players as we have and still hang in there to win some football games, especially the way we've won these last two, when we've, we've gotten down in the first half or early in the second half and then had to come back to win it. These kids seem to find a way with coaching help, obviously, to win games. Well, I, I think there's a lot of character, and uh, there's a lot of good young players that aren't, you know, really ready to play, but they're playing. And, uh, and the veteran players, the uh, Elliots and the Jamie Morrises and uh, Mark Mesner. Now, you got to understand, those guys are hanging in there and giving us the leadership that we need. And so it's been uh, really gratifying for me uh, being knocked out of the race early is, you know, Michigan's not accustomed to that. And yet uh, we're winning close games and hanging in there, and really it's been a lot of fun. And it's been a great job by the kids, good job by the coaching staff to keep everybody in there and really get yourself in position for an awfully good-looking bowl game, too. Well, that's uh, probably in the works, Jim. <laughs> <laughs> we'll talk about that a little later in the meantime. We've got a look at one of the good things about college football. Don't go away. That's next when Michigan Replay continues.